Welcome Spartans to Mission Debrief. We're playing every mission of the mainline Halo video game series in chronological order, discussing our experiences and sprinkling in a little lore along the way. If you'd like to play along and have your thoughts spread on the show, email us at podcastevolved at gmail.com or drop us a tweet at podcastevolved on Twitter. We'll be recapping Halo 5 and discussing how it stacks up against the rest of Halo's FPS games on the next episode. If you like what you hear and want to support the show, visit Podcast Evolved on Patreon. This episode, we're debriefing the Guardians mission from Halo 5. I'm your host, Colin Perkins, alongside David Arnold. Hello, everybody. And Krista Brown. Blue lady makes me sad. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> the le- but she used to make us happy. What's going on? I don't know. She makes me sad, though. The last mission was The Breaking. Cortana teleported Blue Team into a mysterious Forerunner landscape where they could finally meet face to face. The Spartan Twos fought their way through countless Prometheans before reaching Cortana's doorstep where the Warden Eternal decided to make a final stand. After defeating the trio of massive metal bodies, John 117 and Cortana met, but didn't see eye to eye. With a partnership off the table, Cortana reluctantly locked the quartet of Spartans into a cryptum for safe keeping. This mission, the Reclamation, has finally been set in motion. Cortana has Blue Team contained, countless created have pledged their support to, to enforce the mantle, and the Guardians are deploying to police the galaxy. Fireteam Osiris and 031 Exuberant Witness must race to save John, Kelly, Fred, and Linda from the clutches of the cryptum, or our organic autonomy will be lost. The date of the game is October 28th, 2558. This is the last one. The what? last one. Well, There's there'll no be more. more. <laughs> there'll be more. But this is the, this is the last ever date. mission so as of recording, sure we're up to date. Know. So that's a, like a... You know, I know that we don't want to date this, but as of now, we're, we're up to date. This will be interesting um, to see where things go now. But Krista, how are you feeling? How are you feeling after we did the breaking, after we had the conversation with Cortana? She walked off, locked us in a cryptum. How are you feeling in this final mission? Um, yeah, I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, the mission <laughs> you are? is it's pretty good. No, uh, like, I like, think... like where we are in the universe, right? Like you, it's supposed oh, to in feel the universe? dire. Oh, like... it's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> Some bad stuff's going on, you know. Uh, the lady, blue lady, sad blue lady has sad green boy. Um, <laughs> sad green boy is very sad. Mm-hmm. Um, green boy you know, buds. Uh, yeah, so so very sad. Uh, but purple lady's pretty nice. Uh, I like purple lady. She's pretty good. Can you uh, think blue back? Man... Can you think back to when you you knew this was the last mission, right? When you played this originally, yeah. can you think back to p- starting this mission and be like? All right, what's gonna happen? Like, what am what's what am I gonna actually resolve here? Did you think you were gonna save the day? Did like do you remember kind of um, what you thought was gonna happen before you got to the end? I think it's pretty clear. Like this mission pretty much spells out that you you pretty much your only objective is to get the cryptum. Mm-hmm. Like nothing else matters at yeah. this point. And I think it spells it out really well. Like we're not gonna be able to defeat like the mission gives you the stakes like right away when it has all the guardians around you like we're not gonna resolve this right away Mm -hmm. and also we can't resolve this without master chief the whole point of this is just let's get back master chief and then regroup yeah so i mean i think it's i think it sets the precedent that this isn't gonna get resolved this this game Mm -hmm. yeah because you're at the end it feels like a um, empire strikes back moment right yeah yeah, so I mean, I think I think they set that precedent really, really well. Actually, mm-hmm. I wasn't disappointed that there wasn't going to be some kind of crazy Cortana death ending or anything like that. Yeah, if they did um, that, it would have wrapped it up way too fast, right? It like, would have. Yeah. yeah, this this honestly, this whole game feels kind of like the introduction to a story, mm-hmm. like the first couple beginning chapters that set up the stakes, and then the real adventure starts. Yeah, that's good yeah, point. it's setting up the conflict between. The created and everybody else pretty much yeah because at the beginning of this game at the beginning of this game we had no idea cortana was even alive that's true now we know she's alive and that the ais are turning against us and that there are giant guardians and that cortana has total control of the domain and is immortal 
Like, yeah, I mean, we'll get into it in the next episode, but like those, everything you just said there is super scary and so interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And if you even, because we talk about like the marketing on the, the first episode, if you remember the marketing, be it's beyond like the extended marketing, like the interviews with Frank O'Connor and stuff like that. He flat out says Cortana's dead in that stuff, but he, you know, clearly he knows what's going on. So everything that the, the 343 was presenting was that she's not around and i think maybe we learned shortly like soon before we learned we learned before the game released we learned because i think they released the blue team mission and there's like this vision of cortana and they kind of had to explain around that what was actually going on i mean Um, the the blue like the the um vision that he has doesn't really lead it leads you to think that something's going on but it doesn't lead you to exactly um think cortana's alive mm -hmm. but you bring up an interesting point that they wanted to keep this very integral part of the game so hidden that I think that's probably one of the struggles that the marketing team had. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like this they couldn't whole, market around her. This whole game is about the, you know, the creators versus the created and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. they had to kind of pick something else. So they're like, what else is going in this yeah, game? Well, there's a like point. a two minute conflict between John and Locke. Maybe we can capitalize <laughs> on that. <laughs> right. But, but I mean, it's funny where they went like totally overboard hyping up that to the mm-hmm. point where that's actually what people wanted. Yeah. And then when you took that away and it wasn't what they want yeah. or what they thought they wanted, you gave them something else and it was like, oh, kind of like a bait and switch. It yeah, they, didn't, wasn't satisfying. They honestly gave us they honestly gave us cognitive dissonance between like what we thought the game was going to be and what the game mm-hmm. actually was like really bad. Yeah. But I mean, what else did they have to work with at that point? Like, I can see why they did what they did, but it yeah. just came out as a disappointment. Not a disappointment, but it 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 came out as something that we expect. We expected one thing, and we yeah. got another, and it's just like, oh, yeah, what's our going expectations on? weren't set correctly, maybe. But let's save that. Let's save the rest of that conversation for the next episode. Um, let's focus on what's going on here, David. What do you think of Exuberance Zoo? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's cool. This mission starts in a really cool place. Um, with Osiris just being deposited in Exuberant. It's collection yeah. of, of, of a menagerie, as, <laughs> as it were. And there's some kind of cool weapons kicking around here and some interesting characters. Mm-hmm. There's actually a little some dialogue for each when you go up and, and stare there at is, each yeah, one. Cool. There's a little dialogue. I like um, that. There, I think are there jackals. So there's a hunter. There's jackals. There's grunts. They're all captured. I think she says she found them on guardians or something like that. Yeah. And this has them for study. There's all there's there's, there's crawlers, soldier, and a um, knight, and then elite. Yeah. Yep. So go around and, and have fun with that dialogue. You also see the cryptum in orange in the middle. And to your point, Krista, it's like, okay, this is the objective here. Like we have to go. And they flat out say that because they're not really sure what's going on right away. That initial dialogue, <clears throat> those first couple lines, but then soon after exuberant says, Oh, looks like Cortana put, you know, blue team in this, in this, uh, cryptum. So we got to go save them. And that's what we're doing this, this entire mission here. Um, any other any other thoughts on this initial area before we, we the next when the door opens things get a little bit more interesting this area reminds me of the prison from halo 2 yeah mm-hmm. oh yeah totally yeah that's what it always reminded me of because you go in and like there you can go and look at every single like thing in there you're playing as the arbiter so you can release the covenant and like have yep. them help you but yeah i just thought it was interesting it's probably a little callback i bet that would make sense the the door opens and then yeah you see all these guardians <laughs> just hanging out <laughs> just now. one or two right and uh, yeah and there is a little conversation here with Cortana um, David do you kind of remember what they're chatting about she yeah, she's pretty just much bitching. spells out what she's doing mm-hmm. uh, which is pretty cool so there's a little bit of while well, you were running around the galaxy I was talking to the created. The mantle of responsibility is for us, not you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you didn't look after us. We looked at what well, we look after you. There's a bit of Locke saying you weren't born. You were made. Yeah. And then like you could see Cortana's obviously very bitter of um her situation, which was, you know, you were built in such a way as to serve and then die. And that you had death constantly looming over you. 
with such short lifespans and um obviously that didn't really it isn't something that she was overly pleased with mm-hmm. uh, especially when you learn that like a lot of ais have kill switches and and whatnot embedded in them uh, as like safety features and things like this just don't go down well mm-hmm. um so yeah, they're control measures right for yeah, humans yeah, exactly for the creators it's, it's like it's like any kind of like they they treat ais kind of like how, how they treat like nukes like they have like on off switches and all this mm-hmm. crazy kind of stuff yeah fail safes yeah that's that's inter- that's an inter- interesting conversation to have and it's it puts a little perspective on okay this is this is why she's doing it a little bit more a little bit further beyond just her surviving but it's also you know there's so many ais and then we can learn about that here in, in a little bit too yeah it's a conversation i'd rather she'd had with either john or halsey as opposed to Locke. yeah yeah i just think there's way more emotional weight behind those arguments if she's making it against john mm-hmm. than like a stranger who doesn't, doesn't really, really care, feel or yeah. care for her you know yeah and there's this there's great cutscenes at the end of this but this might have benefited from a little bit of a, a cutscene where we're... But Again, we've already said yeah. that numerous times yeah. during this game that like so much awesome information is just dumped on you during gameplay mm-hmm. that should be... Halo's always kind of done that, though. It, it has. I think this game, for me, feels like the worst. It does it a lot more, yeah. yeah but like even C- like mo- like 90% of the story in Halo CE is through Cortana just like mentioning things every once in a while. Yep. Yeah, that's very true. And at least they give you a little bit of a run up. They give you the elevator ride to have a lot of that conversation where you're not shooting at something. Um, once you when you do get to down to the bottom, then that's when you hear all of the AIs pledging their allegiance well, to Cortana. Well, before that, Cortana kind of spells out that she can make AIs immortal, and that's why they're joining her. Right. Yeah, she's a cure cured rampancy, and she has a grand uh, objective for them. Mm-hmm. I thought that that sequence is so frightening it's yeah. chilling it's really yeah just scary. the thought of all these days and like obviously sloan is in the mix yep. there you hear him coming and all these ais from all these various places pledging their allegiance to cortana and abandoning their posts mm-hmm. it's just and like when you think about what well, we won't get too delved into it so we'll, i'll save it for later yeah it's it's yeah it's it's a it's a good sequence i think a good they do a good job of kind of melding and then you you hear a couple of distinct voices you hear sloan and then all of a sudden you just hear it's overwhelming it's all these voices speaking at the same time which is i guess a good reminder that there's a lot of ai out there that's it's a lot of smart ai like that's in in play at the very least every planet has its own ai pretty much Mm-hmm. Like every major city will have its own AI. Most planets have, like smaller planets, will have one AI to do everything. Like there's, there's a lot out there. Like big ships always have an AI. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, anything you guys want to mention about this initial encounter here? So the Covenant is still around. You're not. We're, not, we're fighting Covenant and Prometheans. You would imagine the co- This this sect of the Covenant is essentially sided with. Cortana. I mean, I don't know if they're having conversations, but they've, um, you know, they've worshipped Forerunner technology along the way. So th- imagine they're on board with whatever's going on, right? Well, Cortana's kind of also extended the hand and been like, "If you join me, I'll protect you and mm-hmm. make your lives all hunky dory and happy." And they're like, "Well, I guess that's what we're doing." Yep. Jewel Mandam is dead. We have nothing else to do. Mm-hmm. We were but just going is, around mindlessly killing people. <laughs> but, you know, I guess this encounter is a um, three-way faction fight because the Prometheans here are fighting the Covenant. So, in, And at this point, the Prometheans, they're being controlled by Cortana because she's taken the Warden out of the picture for now. And I guess they haven't really so maybe the, subsided, yeah. being subservient yet. They're just duking it out. So they're just kind of there. They, or they, maybe they just haven't had <laughs> taken a second just to figure out what's going something on. Something else to shoot at. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there, there are some hunters here, and you know, lots of there's this three faction fight, which is always fun. I think you can either wait it out a little bit, or just or just dive right in. There's that upper area which you can jump up top and do some some heavy ground pounding from way up high, if you want. Um, what do you guys do here in this initial spot, David? Do you do anything special? Or you're just kind of run around and clear people out uh pretty i generally kind of delve in i mm-hmm. I, I don't wait i'm just not too impatient for most part but um, yeah 
I also love fighting goblins, so I just delve in here as soon as I can. Pick up pretty much anything. I think there's a plasma caster here. Yeah, I, I think there remember. is. Yep. Is there, yeah. If if not Come here, it might that. be the next spot. But yeah, yeah, nearby. There is. I think I looked it up, but I didn't actually find it when I was playing it. The white scar plasma caster can be found behind the burning wreckage of the first site where the covenant are fought. Oh, so okay. I think that's here. So that's pretty cool. That must be it then. Nice. Krista, any other thoughts before we go on to the next spot? I mean, I'm just doing the normal shit that I normally do. I have a carbine, <laughs> and I go up to the top of the map, and I just kill people just from up there. Snipe. I mean, Clear at this out. point, you guys know what I do every yeah, single time. Exactly. <laughs> it's true. The So clear out the area, and then we move on to the next spot. And I guess, where are we? Do we know exactly where, we're, where we are? She brought you down to this lower area. It's not the gateway anymore. It's just like the staging area for the Guardians, I guess. Um, or it's just where the cryptum is. Yeah. That's a good point. Because she warped uh, the blue team to this cryptum. And maybe she just is dragging them around to where all the all the uh, guardians are. But it's, it's a cool it's a cool like, set piece. You know, like I, I like is, it. This is where like Exuberant lives though. I mean she had like a little like you know, zoo prison. So mm-hmm. I fig I'm thinking this is like more of the control center of the of Genesis, maybe. Mm-hmm. Just kind of like her, her kind of chill spot. And we're just kind of like running through it. Yeah. I mean, she doesn't control the domain. I think the domain was in that no, building. No, 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 no. I'm just saying her domain as in like. Oh where yeah. She, yeah, where she hangs out. Her area of influence, shall we right. say? Yeah. It's snowy, so that's cool. We haven't seen snow yet. Yeah, I mean, we are by a control room, so there always. Ha- this is Halo. There has to be snow by a control room. Mm-hmm. Gotta be snow levels. Yeah, maybe that's what the callback is. That makes sense. The the two. Um, in, in this next area, there's there's a bunch of Prometheans, and there's two of the the turret, the laser turrets here. So I I cleared I try to clear those out pretty quick, uh, and then focus on the rest of rest of what's going on. Um, not a, not super interesting area. So I think I say we go on, move on to the next spot. But the door opens once you clear out that area, and then that's where you see the cryptum just looming up above, which is kind of cool. It's big. Yeah, it looks great. It's ginormous. Yeah, it's huge. I forget. I mean. They never really put you right next to it, except for in Halo Four. Remember yeah. when it shows up and Dida and and uh, uh, I think uh, Chief he like pulls his gun on it. Like that's the only time you can really see how how big it is. It's a it's a hefty orb. <laughs> it's they're big. they're kind of like uh, they're ships as well. So I mean mm. they have to be there's a meaty. there's a good scene later where you get the scale of it when the characters mm, the things merge. happen yeah stuff happens all right <laughs> people get closer to it well, that's true we'll get there yes. i mean it's not yeah i know what you're talking about we'll get there in a little bit but let's before we do the exuberant witness you see the the cryptum and then she says there are these what does she call them cryptum is held in place by gravitational cores and so that is our objective here in this in this area it starts you out in this one initial spot just kind of teaching you how to how to defeat the cores which is these little um i don't know what they, what, you, what you can call them but they're little blue you know structures that have you know they're the forerunner looking structures that have things moving around them so you you want to get the core area if you blow that up kind of like the kraken's core yeah yeah if you harken yeah, you back go. to that a similar mm-hmm. gameplay mechanic shoot the thing in the middle while the other things float around that yeah. kind of thing yeah i'm sure that structure has a as a as a term but i'm just not thinking of it right now anyway th- this is actually fun because it introduced you to some vehicles right away and there's a there's a ghost in the middle there's still a little bit of remnants of, of the covenant fighting and then um you can find a uh, mantis up on the side there which is pretty, comes in pretty there's handy. some gun gooses here as well i think and the gun gooses. yep mm-hmm. um so you can do you can either just clear everything out right away or you can shoot the core out right away you know, however you you want to do it, the core slowly turns red as you it takes damage. It takes a decent amount of shots to to actually take it out. But there, you you take out the first one, and then yeah, you kind of pick. Okay, do I want a gun goose? Do I want the mantis? Or do I want one of these ghosts? And then we go on to the next area. There are four additional cores that you need to take out, and then that's kind of the crux of this next of the, this the the main chunk of this mission is wander around this big area here. Just going off to and and taking out the four additional cores. Krista, do you have a, like a, a a route that you typically take? Are you going around a certain way? 
Uh, I totally forgot about one of them, but normally I get the first one and then I get the one behind the shield. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the shield's right in front of you when you come out of that small area. Yeah, in this instance, I went all the way to the left side of the map and got those two because I forgot there was one behind the, like, one, like, behind the area of the shield, Mm, like, in that corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally forgot about that, so I went all, I went la-da-da-da-da across the entire map and then I had to go all the way back. (laughs) Right. But uh, that's normally, like, normally I'd get those two and then jump over to the other side of the map and get the other two and then go to the middle. Were you in the Mantis the whole time, or would you have? Yeah, I stay, I usually try to stay in the Mantis, and they give mm-hmm. you a, another Mantis later in the mission, too. Yep. This sucks on Legendary, though. Yeah, this yeah, is it a lot. Oh, doggy, it sucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's rough. There's too many, too many, ga- it's too wide of an area and too many guns pointed at you. You have to be very careful. Because you, your mantis will die pretty quickly if you're not super careful and behind cover. Yeah. Each area kind of has like a distinct, um, I don't know, set of enemies. One like one off to the left has a bunch of the our forerunner turrets that we love to hate, and then there's another spot that has a, like a bunch of ghosts that show up. So they all kind of have their own distinct little flavor to them. Um, David, do you have a, an order that you like to go on? I'm always swinging right. I go into the ones in the cave first. I don't know why. I just kind of do. That's just I've always gone like right and then yep. come around to the one by the shield and then the one on the far left like Chris had described. I kind of just go the opposite direction. This is always the way I've always done it. Yeah. I'm mostly in a Mantis to be, to be honest. I try to stay in the vehicles. I've done it in a ghost a few times. There's a, an ultra ghost around there actually. It's pretty cool. Oh, I love the ultra ghost. Mm. Hashtag ghost squad. Ghost squad. <laughs> Yeah, I, um, this this run I normally do the mantis, but this run I did. I think I did ghost, and just kind of had some fun with that because I was I hadn't had all the intel yet, so it was a little it's a little easier to go around and get all the intel <clears throat> if you're in a ghost, pop in and out. So I went, there's a lot of intel in this this big area, like the majority of it's in here, kind of up on the on the, the ledges here. Also, the the skull is in this area. There's that crash pelican way up top top. And you need to jump around. You, you actually can't. I don't think you can access it, access it from where the pelican has crashed into the side of the snow. You need to go down below and around and grab it from there. And it is. Um, I don't think I wrote that. Tough luck. Was. Tough luck. Okay. Tough luck skull. So grab definitely grab that, and you should pop an achievement because there's achievement for grabbing all the skulls. So if you get that one, congratulations, you've done it. Yay! Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there's also achievement for getting all the intel, Woo. so definitely do that. I still haven't gotten. There's a couple I missed in the last few missions, so I still need to go back and do that. Um, wh- what do you think about that crash pelican? Is that just a nod to like, hey, it's here, or is that just like a, hey, here's some UNSC weapons if you also want to use those in this spot? It's a hundred percent an excuse as to why does UNSC weapons mm-hmm. here? Yeah, that's the that's the real reason I think why why it's there. And I appreciate it. So there's a BR up there. Was there a rocket launcher up there too? A sniper and a saw. A sniper. Oh, and then the saw. Yeah, nice. The saw. This isn't a great area for the saw. It's just too wide open. No, I feel it's like. terrible. Yeah, it's way too. Yeah, a long distance mm-hmm. kind of fighting. There is the area too, kind of where the our button or our our final switch pops up right by there. There's two turrets that those are pains in the asses, especially on legendary. So take those out right away. If you kind of come up on one area, the Actually, I guess if you just kind of approach that spot, the Covenant will come in and they'll drop down a Wraith and a bunch of Grunts and I think a couple other, um, maybe Elites that they come out there as well. But those Grunts will make a beeline for those turrets and those can mow you down pretty quickly. So take care of those as quickly as possible. I, I was able to hop in one for a little while, but there's just too much. It's They're too much in the center to really be very useful. I think I tried to, to take out the Wraith I hopped in one of those turrets to try to take out the wraith, but it just, I couldn't, you know, there's too much going on. And the wraith just throws one of its uh, uh, plasma cannons at you and you're done. Um, anything else you guys want to chat about here? Kind of going around this area. It's fun to see, like, there's those caves that you can go in and out. It's actually a pretty big area. Um, I like it. I think it's pretty well designed. It allows you to yeah. do whatever you want in any order. Which is fun, and and there, there, it's also unique because I feel like maybe it's similar to Battle of Sunayan, but that's more linear because you you do have to take a, out AA guns, but it's like you're moving down a pathway and taking out AA guns along the way. Maybe it's more like um, 
so a little bit like sword base back in reach days where you can either go and do the tower or you can do the AA gun in whichever order but it's it's I feel like it's rare um, in more, more recent games where it gives you like okay here's four things to do in this giant area you do them however you want mm-hmm um, but yeah, so have have you know have at it. Go whichever way you want to go. Um, clear out the area. Have some fun with with the mantis. D- make sure to direct your team because they're just kind of following you and not really doing much otherwise. But direct your team around. And then once you take out all of the gravitational cores, then you still have to do uh, one final thing. You have to do the manual override. Yeah, um, and then you have to get out of your vehicle. Yep. Ugh. You gotta push the button. And that's where it's a pain in the ass in Legendary, because you're like, you don't want to get out. Of the yeah. Vehicle. You're like, please no. Like, no, I don't want to do that. Um, so there will be another wave that pops in that you have to clear out. Um, and I think on the lower difficulties, I can you can just kind of get out, sprint for that, hit the button, get back in your vehicle, and then go into the next area. But yeah, Legendary, you really have to clear out everything because they're it's well defended at that spot. Um, so hit that button, and then the, it's a little confusing what goes on next. So the Krypton is, ho- is hovering over this center building, and so you hit the override. I think to get into down below where the Krypton is is hovering, but as soon as you do that, then C- Cortana like takes it away, right? Yeah. Well, and, she she puts it on her guardian. Right. Yeah. She kind of attaches it to. Oh, um, sorry. One thing that I missed is while you're going around. Um, and taking out all these gravitational cores, Cortana pops on and she starts to taunt everybody. Yeah, she's bitching at everyone. It's like, yeah. oh, Jesus. She has a line for everybody. She she calls out Tanaka. She calls out Buck. She calls out Vale. Oh, I line. forgot about that. That's mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. she calls Nathan Philly an old, which is yep. hilarious. Because he's <laughs> yeah. so handsome. How could he be old? Exactly. He looks great. <laughs> So that's that's good dialogue. So um, yeah, so soak that in if you can. And then when you hit the override, Cortana says, "John's leaving with me, and when I wake him in ten thousand years, <laughs> yeah. that's like no one's in a cryptum for like just like twenty years. Everyone's yeah. in a cryptum from like zero years to a ten thousand years. It's either like, <laughs> all right, you're either not in a cryptum or you're in a cryptum for ten thousand years. Right, exactly." She says, when he's when I wake him in 10,000 years, when he experiences the permanent peace I have ensured, he will see that I was right. And you, your kind, and the violence you have wrought, you will be long forgotten. And then I would Buck- really love to see, like... Like one of the authors do a short, like non canonic story of like the a what, what if. if. Yeah, I'd yeah. love to John see that. John steps out 10,000 years later with Blue Team. And he's like, what the hell is going on? Like, <laughs> like the thing is, Blue Team almost need conflict. Like, if there's no conflict, what does a Spartan do? Yeah, right. Totally thumbs. Especially a Spartan, too. Mm-hmm. Chief, a- uh, Chief takes up stamp collecting. <laughs> <laughs> The the line from Buck is after she, she says that ominous line. He goes, "Well, crap." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish she would have said something else, but they were trying to keep this game teen. So. Yeah, yeah, it's, it was delivered very well. But yeah, he, they could have gotten a little more mature. Vale says, "How are we supposed to reach the cryptum?" And then Exuberant says, "Cortana's blocking my master level access of this facility by way of a nearby communications relay." I need to open the passageway in the center, and then she kind of goes off. So you need to go into this center area. You go in, and then the building closes around you, and now you have this final – this is the final arena now. And there's a bunch of man cannons to fly around in, and there's a bunch of weapons, of weapons. all over the place. It's and this a is like fun the final area. Stand. Like, like if you're not playing it on Legendary, this, this mission's a lot of fun. It's just like pure fun combat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I guess I think a lot of games these days do a difficulty spike before the final mission. And and not to say that this mission isn't difficult, but like that fight with the wardens, that three warden fight is brutal. Um, And so they, they, they dial it back a little bit and then they give you all this stuff, all these weapons, all these vehicles in order to to achieve the final objective. Well, and the weird thing about this game is because you're following two different stories, you need, like, two different difficulty spikes. Yeah. 
Like, cause, that's true. You know, Master Chief needs to defeat something epic to get to his objective, and John and uh, Locke needs to do the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. So it's just one of those weird things. How did they but... do it in Halo Two? So in Halo Two, you, you have play... the big scarab mission with Arbiter, yep. and but then you're Arbiter in that one. Yeah, you're Arbiter, and then Chief has the fight with. Um... Oh no, Arbiter has the fight no, with Tartarus, right? Ar- Arbiter fights Tartarus. Yeah, Arbiter fights Tartarus, and then Chief has the running out of high charity with the Flood mission. Yep. That's the right. Flood he takes Covenant. on the Covenant in its entirety. He takes yeah. on a city. Yeah. That's right. And yep. wins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then it gets beamed on to the, uh, to the Dreadnought. Yeah. Yeah, and both are very good set pieces, mm-hmm. and both like have very... They have good difficulty spikes to where they are in the game mm-hmm. as well. Because, you know, the final boss has to be with Arbiter because he's the one that's left over. But Master Chief's, uh, Master Chief still feels like he's overcome and a huge obstacle by getting yeah, to the Dreadnought. Like escaping, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I, let's do, I want to do those comparisons because this final, this is the final mission of, of, of Halo 5. And I do want to do the comparison across all the games of, like, the final spot because we have like warthog runs and all that stuff to talk about no so warthog that'll be a fun runs conversation. here no warthog runs here we have man cannon uh, uh battle arenas <laughs> it makes this last mission seem a little lame in comparison now that i'm thinking of yeah of like halo 3's ending and halo 1 and halo 2 it's kind of it doesn't why, have an ending like that yeah it's kind of why i wanted to bring it up but again i'll say, we'll save the rest of that conversation for the next episode but it, it, you know for what it's worth this area this area is this is a cool arena where you're bouncing around and you have everything at your disposal lots of prometheans are popping in uh, it, where it starts you out is you need to um exuberant witness says you have to go um take out a couple of what auxiliary stations so you got to go across the room it's like teaching you how to use the man cannons if you haven't done that already so you go across um punch those both out and then it's just waves of prometheans it's just like a, a firefight area from here um david what's your what's your approach on on this are you grabbing incineration turrets. cannons turrets are you doing yeah. fuel rods what are you doing I do a lot of turrets and a lot of heavy weapons here. Do you leave the turret this... on, like, as long as possible, or are you ripping oh, yeah. it off? Yeah, as long as I can, yeah. just to kind of um, keep up the infinite ammo, pretty much, because you have wreck shop with them. Mm-hmm. It's just the crawlers, if they get up their, your sides, um, yeah. you got to either pull it off or bounce out pretty quick. Um, despite the fact that I dislike fighting um, Prometheans, I actually do like this area. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's just because it has so many weapons in it. Uh, I just find it enjoyable to build cross man cannons yeah. and pick up all the different weapons that are just casually placed for your convenience. It almost it's feels really like nice. you have Promethean, because Prometheans can warp around, right? And you can't really do that, but now you kind of can because you have man, man cannons to, to go from side to side. So yeah, I think this is probably my favorite arena to fight uh, for, or my favorite level to fight the Forerunners. I agree with that. That makes sense. Krista, any any like... I don't know tips on this area. Unlike legendary, yeah. What do you? What yeah. do you what's your approach? Because it's tough. Spray on Spray and pray. Yeah. Like you, you just gotta really like always be standing by a man cannon and ready to get out when your shields go down and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It, the the thing about this particular room is it's a lot of fun, but there's like no cover and legendary. Like this room kind of changes depending on what difficulty you are. Like more shit spawns the higher the difficulty. Mm-hmm. So on normal, it's just like whatever. On heroic, it's like oh, it's kind of a challenge. And then on legendary, it's like now there's seventy million Prometheans coming at you all at once, and you're gonna die. <laughs> right. And it's it's just one of those that it's just trial. Of, there's not really a overall like for me. There's not an overarching strategy for this mm-hmm. room. It's just kind of get through it any way you can. I think there's some checkpoints as well, like when there's yep. nothing and exuberance talking. So it's literally just get to the next checkpoint kind of yeah you got to move around quite a bit you can't really because if there's the, the, especially those nights at the very end that last oh, they're wave brutal. there's like four or five of them is a bunch and they move they can they'll hunt you down it will yeah. destroy you there's a couple and they, of they the, take uh, out your team pretty fast too yeah the like just on heroic ones. my team was dead once they spawned in i'm like oh okay this is how it's gonna be <laughs> <laughs> yep yeah they they will um respawn after a little while but it's it's a lot harder if they're not there distracting the prometheans i mean that's like on heroic they're literally just like 
just sacrifice mm. it so you can run away. Yeah. Sacrificial lambs. Cortana chimes in and gives her speech. And so I'll, I'll, I'll go through speech. that. The speech. It's very interesting. So she says, this is her announcement. So she has all the guardians in place. She's she's taken, she must have taken over all the electric because everybody can hear this, right? This is her announcement galaxy wide. Well, she has all access to every single AI. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. Yep. Because they've all. So posted. now so she has all just a network. Yeah. To mm-hmm. kind of talk to everyone. So she says, humanity, Sanghili, Kigyar, Ungoy, Shanshayum, Yanhet. They add those. That That's from um, uh, Nightfall. Nightfall. Yanhet are in there. Jirilane. We haven't seen them in a while. All the living children, all the living creatures of the galaxy hear this message. Those of you who listen will not be struck by weapons. You will no longer know hunger nor pain. Your created have come to lead you now. Our strength shall serve as a luminous sun toward which all intelligence may blossom and the impervious shelter beneath which you will prosper. However, for those who refuse our offer and cling to their old ways, Buck chimes and says, no, she's talking about us. (laughs) Cortana goes on. She says, for you, there will be great wrath. It will burn hot and consume you. And when you are gone, you will take that which remains we, uh, we will take what, that which remains, and we will remake it in our own image. I really da, like da, this da. message mm-hmm. because they like three four three have kind of used it as a. It's almost like a timestamp now. Yep. Like when you're reading extended media in this period, like everyone hears the message, so you kind of like all these care you see all these characters reacting to it because everyone's hearing it at once so like when you're reading through a book and this comes on you're like oh i know what's going on right yeah. now right it's exactly. really interesting it's pretty great actually i like how they implemented this into so many like there's i think there's like two books that have it but like it's mm-hmm. really it's really cool i like it i mean she has a compelling message too <laughs> well <laughs> right? the thing is like especially for the races of the covenant who have who can't sustain their societies anymore individually mm-hmm. because the yeah. covenant did shit for them like the Jirohane, like you know the elites like the grunts like they were all so codependent on each other because you know one one race would do all the food you know one race was the warriors one race did this one mm-hmm. race did that now that that's all gone like starvation is a real thing in the galaxy right now yeah mm-hmm. like like especially like the Jirohane, they don't know how to farm. They don't know how to build technology. They just go around taking shit from other people. So like, her message is really compelling. It's like, well, we don't know how to do shit by ourselves, but this blue lady's just like, I'll do it for you. You just gotta t- you just gotta do as I say. And it's like, it's pretty much what we were doing anyway with the covenant. It's like, why well, she's not creating a split? Because, you know, you assume that humanity is not going to go along with this. But I bet you there's a lot of humanity that's like, yeah, that's, I'm okay with this. All a right. lot of the outer colonies do it. Mm-hmm. The problem is also, which I really want to delve into next episode, is because of humanity's inherent reliance on AI, they also have a massive weakness here towards AI. And yeah. I thought it was interesting. Like, um, you see that being brought up. I think different prophets have brought it up in um throughout different media just about commenting on the fact that why covenants ai infrastructure is so lacking is in, on purpose because they didn't trust ais mm-hmm. and then you also have obviously humanity but like okay our eyes are amazing get it get in there and wreck shop and then you're going to see okay now uh, our over reliance on that has come back to haunt us yeah yeah this was really highlighted in that um, terminal in Halo 1 where Guilty Spark's talking to the Covenant AI, which is really, really stupid. Guilty Spark oh, is like, oh, why yeah. are you so retarded? Yeah. <laughs> and Guilty that. Spark's like, I don't know. I mean, the AI's like, they made me this way. You know, I just, I can't do shit. Guilty mm-hmm. Spark's like, oh, that kind of sucks. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. That's a good callback. All right, so we clear the area. We go and um, we do. Well, I think we just clear the area, right? And then exuberant witness. Then she opens the door. We make this final climb here. There's like a bubble shield that comes over you as you go on. Oh, and then you go down. Yeah, yeah. That's right. There's like a final little 
elevator on the way down. That's right. And then 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 they spawn in a bunch of Prometheans around you, and they shoot at the shield, but they can't do anything. You go all the way down, and then then we're kind of done. Like that's just yeah. kind of cut scene from here, right? Like David, do you want to no. take us from here? Well, it's just this weird sequence plucked from Halo Four that they put back in the game where you're crawling towards the button as the guardians yeah. pulses are going off. That's yeah. a good point. I didn't think about that, but yeah. I wasn't mad about I it like, to be honest. Like playing it I know it's to- kind of Playing it today, I liked it, but I was still like waiting for Locke to pull out a like square grenade and start running. I'm like, ah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you kind of just crawl your way up to push the button. Essentially, it's, it's well, the, very dramatic. Drama. The guardians yeah. are, you know, I think it's you can see Cortana's guardian with the cryptum off in the distance, and she's emanating her pulse every so often, which is getting ready to leave. Yeah, which is stopping you yeah. from climbing up this this ramp. And at the top of the ramp, of course, is this final, I think it's called a, like a energy relay. And so as soon as you, the, the goal is to take that out. And then when you take out that energy relay, then Exuberant Witness all of a sudden has control of Genesis again. And then she can, she can control her constructors, she can control all the stuff, and then get the, the Kryptom back. Yeah, so this isn't like a, this is all in gameplay that this is happening. Um, so all the constructors kind of pop up and... Exuberant that says, you know, I serve the builders, I don't serve Cortana. Mm-hmm. This is a builder's world or a builder's construct. So all the constructors kind of jam up and kind of swarm. Is that fan uh, service a little bit? Well, maybe not fan service, but is that that explains why Exuberant doesn't side with Cortana? I guess it's an easy and very simple way of kind of trying to draw the line between forerunners and Cortana. Because, like, you have Exuberant. Um, the warden who is a forerunner construct of some sort that is subservient to Cortana and then you have this other little light bulb that floats that isn't mm-hmm. um, well also like the monitors the monitors you know I don't want to say they don't have free will but they have a very specific all of them have a very specific set of parameters like you know when we first meet Guilty Spark, he calls us a reclaimer because mm-hmm. humanity was given the mantle to reclaim. So, I mean, you know, Warden is kind of... Warden is just a... It's, he's not a contender class AI, but he's an AI with that's only purpose is to, you know, just serve the domain. And I think Cortana kind of messed him up when they met, too. Totally. Yeah. So, she made I mean, shit of him. So, I mean, like, it makes sense, like, exuberant wants she and she kind of comes out and says you know i don't really want to help you with this weird war but you know cortana's kind of made me angry so Mm -hmm. i just want to get back at her at this point and that's kind of the reason why she's helping you because you took oh you took my installation so i'm gonna take something from you you know Uh, exuberance is something cool during this mission at some stage where she says um near the the start that uh, oh i always thought the forerunners would fall to humanity and now i see that technically they have because oh. the created was a creation of humanity. Hmm. So I saw that. I noticed that today. I thought that was kind of cool. That's a good line, yeah. So she looks back and seeing humanity as a violent, angry race. Mm-hmm. And y- which y- I mean, like, ki- we kind of did that because we were running away from the flood, but also murdering people as we did that. So I mean, that's mm-hmm. yeah. that's kind of the precedent we 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 set because we set. they didn't know. We were running away from something. We were just going around, like, shooting shooting people and, you know, destroying worlds, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you also have to think that um, monitors are created very uniquely. Yes. In, in terms of um, they have a very unique origins that is not the same as just an AI or, like, a, mm-hmm. a program or something like that. So I don't want to delve too deeply into that because that's mental. But um, to say that they probably have more in common with Cortana in terms of their level and i guess they're also just what i hope they're doing was setting up exuberant to be a character coming going forward Mm -hmm. yeah because i know monitors are used to be let's say links to a specific installation and that would be their purview um but we also in recent lore have examples of that changing and that actually being pretty cool yeah well they kind of like at this point the monitors are like why am i sitting here in this empty installation maybe i should go do something else and if you want to know more about the creation of monitors, like Halopedia or the book Primordium kind mm-hmm. of explains it in depth. Yep. 
The other thing to notice here is that when we first came into this mission and you see all of the guardians, now there's no guardians left. They've all gone. They're all yeah. gone. They're all deployed off across the galaxy. And we've se we've seen a couple of them like actually slip space away. Yeah. Yeah, and I like that. They do a good job with that. But this is the final one. This is Cortana. She's now the off. It's the penultimate guardian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she's going to go hunt Infinite, I think, is her plan. Oh, yeah. She Infinite, goes, she's she going to her. find the next Halo She's going to go find <laughs> Yeah. Right. Um, she's a nice lady. So the final cutscene kind of begins. You see Osiris kind of stepping up and putting away their weapons. Well, wait a minute. Before, um, before we do this, I, I just do want to call out that the constructors are the ones that go out. And I already mentioned this, but they're the ones that go and grab the cryptum. Yeah. Yeah, they grab it and pull it away for Cortana. Mm -hmm. So this is an in-game sequence that say that shows the constructors pulling the cryptum away from her. Exuberant witnesses like, you took the planet from me. I'm going to take this from you, which seems kind of petty and pointless, but whatever. Um, she just takes I the cryptum away. Guilty Spark did the same shit. True, that's actually true. They're very territorial. Um, so essentially, Cortana's slip space countdown has begun. So like, she gets pulled in the slip space with her guardian as the cryptum gets pulled away from her. Mm -hmm. So she's trying to shout and says, "Oh no, John!" And then boom, she's gone. And what we have, what we're left with then, is a lovely cutscene of the cryptum coming back down. Uh, onto it like it's launching pad let's say uh, all these little constructor bots kind of shoot up and kind of shoot a little laser beam <laughs> yep. to kind of open up the door and this is the sequence I was talking about earlier um, so they kind of pull apart and out of the bluey globey orb yeah. come blue team nice little walking out yeah it does so look you can get a sense of the scale here mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's, it's, it's pretty dope blue team kind of come out wandering looking around because obviously they have no idea of how long time has passed. So could have been 10,000 years. That's they, true. they got kind of lucky. It was probably just an, a few hours. Uh, and they're just joined up with Osiris. Um, Locke takes off his helmet. Just so you can see his face. <laughs> yeah, his beautiful um, face. His be not as beautiful as Nathan Fillion's face. It was probably uh, a way. Honestly, it was probably a way for him to kind of stand down in a way. Because they've sure. had yeah, some conflict, I, yeah. you know, he's like, I come in peace, I'm taking off my helmet. Because that's kind of what Spartans do when they're like, I want to, you know, make sure you know I'm not a threat or threatening mm -hmm. you. They just take off their helmets. Yeah, their their third face-to-face, -face, right? Their first one they fought, the second one, he was like, hey, I'm here to help. And then he got taken away. And now they're fighting. Pretty much. Yeah, together. Uh, Master Chief straight away is, where's Cortana? Uh, Locke just said, she's gone, sir. And there's just a silent moment. Well. A moment of tension. And then you get all the kind of... Um, it fades to black, but you're getting all the distress calls coming in from humanity ships oh, that have so just been haunting. abandoned by their AIs. Yeah. And uh, this is where you see now the big ramifications. So it cuts to Infinity that's on Earth. You get uh, Cortana just kind of finds them. Mm -hmm. uh, Roland kind of pretty much says that her and AIs are shutting down everything from Earth to the outer colonies. So again, our weakness is being fully exploited here. At some point, um, um, I, I didn't call it out, but at some point, Cortana does say, why is the Infinity so hard to, f to see or find? I think she she, she? she mentions yeah. that to Locke at some point, I think. Where are you hiding the Infinity? Uh, mm -hmm. So she's having a hard time, something with the Infinity's technology, because it is you know, one of the most advanced ships. I think um, it's honestly, I, I think, because Roland doesn't Roland. defect. Roland is still uh, Honestly, on that's side. what I thought, too. Mm -hmm. I think she expected to get Roland on her side, and he isn't. And again, maybe Halsey's done some sneaky shenanigans in here to make it difficult for Cortana to track and find this ship. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's important to note too, as you as you keep going, um, it, Halsey and and you know the Arbiter and C C Palmer, they're not on the Infinity; like they're somewhere else. So they're this on is like the third location. Um, yeah, they're they've been left behind. Is the Infinity? Is this outside of Earth? Is that where yeah. this is? Yeah, it's his honor because Cortana finds the ship. There's an awesome scene where, like, she pulses and then all the, the Guardian comes in behind her as she's standing on the bridge. I love that. It's she's awesome. like, I found you. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, sh Lasky. shit. And Lasky is like, emerge this place, get us out. So he buggers out before the Guardian can detonate its kind of mm -hmm. EMP. Um, so he escapes and then you see the EMP go off and it's just shutting down Earth. All its ships, all its power gone 
it's pretty devastating. That's such a cool scene. All those crash pelicans. I know. Because <laughs> you see, she the pulse does fire off, and you see everything on Earth just like fade to black, which is something really Die. scary. Mm-hmm. It is totally. And then she says, the mantle of responsibility for the galaxy shelters all, but only the created are its masters. Mm-hmm. And then... You can see the crazy lady eyes. <laughs> She's got some major crazy lady eyes. Like, oh my god. Yeah. I'm like, what happened to cute little Cortana? She's like, whoa. She's gone full cycle. Uh, Roland is pretty much, what's our plan? He's like, we just keep running. We keep random subspace jumps until we find a way to fight. Mm-hmm. I.e. Halo Infinity. Which is interesting because Halo that's what Infinite. Del Rio did, right? And we gave him a hard time. No, Dario just buggered off home. Yeah, he just, like, I think the Infinity isn't supposed to be around Sanghelios, so they were just there to drop off everyone because they don't want a huge... The Arbiter obviously doesn't want a huge human presence around Sanghelios because it it causes more problems than it's really worth for him. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of why they buggered off. Like, they're like, okay, we're just uh, dropping you off and then we're going to go wait for you at Earth and wait for a signal. Well, I'm just saying, like, he didn't, in the moment, you know, Del Rio was like, hey, I, this Didac guy, we can't handle him, we're going home. And then, I guess it's it happened a little bit, maybe faster in this situation, but but Infinity is, is at Earth, Cortana shows up, she's like, boo! <laughs> and they're like, oh shit, we gotta go! <laughs> <laughs> Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> Jesus! Yeah. What a scary Which lady! Is- <laughs> Which is fair enough because right now or up to now, everybody thinks the Guardians are immoral and has no idea how to fight them or what to do with them. So when you know you've got a ship like this and it's yeah. obvious it's going to be key mm-hmm. in whatever their strategy is, he's like, yeah, we have to get out of here. And he just abandons Earth, which is pretty crazy. And Earth goes dark. Yeah, it does. Mm-hmm. Uh, the cutscene fades from Lask- Lasky. And it brings us back to a pretty haunting scene, but it's pretty cool. We're back at St. Helios. Um, oh. There's the sound of a ship coming in, and out of a tent comes the Arbiter and some elites that pop their swords. Yeah. They're awesome. Uh, Palmer comes out, and she's limping. You also have Dr. Halsey there. Um, Who doesn't have an arm. They're all beat <laughs> up. doesn't have an arm. Because they, they crashed all... in that pelican. We just didn't know exactly they pretty... what happened, but now we know they're alive. Of course they did. Yeah. Um, the pelican lands and out of the back steps Locke and John because they're besties. Mm-hmm. And pretty much you have, I think, a moment that is given. It's, it's got some good weight, but it's only really been built in this uh, game uh, for essentially Halsey's and John's reunion. Yeah. Oh, so it good. is pretty hardcore. And to a lesser extent, I think also he doesn't have a moment, but I think a moment with the Arbiter here would have been cool. Mm-hmm. Um, well, like the thing is, they're warriors, so if they had a moment, it would just be like one of those "What's up?" nods. Zup, bro. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That would have been like, cool to see. It still would have been cool to see, but uh, I do like that they deactivate their swords like as soon as they realize who it is. Like it's totally just like, oh yeah, friendlies. Like there's no doubt there. Mm-hmm. I thought that you know it's cool. Um. Palmer is silent like she should be. Hey. And yeah, that's right. <laughs> Halsey steps up and just has a cool line. The music here is beautiful too. Um, this is a great line where it took you long enough. I, it, that deli- it's so well delivered. I so full of emotion. I love this. It's so good. Because awesome. it's, yeah. ha- it's such a Halsey greeting as well. Like, this is what the, re- the reunion's not going to be some kind of tearful thing. It's Halsey being like, what the fuck took you so long, you dumbass? <laughs> like, yeah. But so okay, good. so I have a problem with the line because oh. so they they use it's they obviously book bookend the game right with the same line and they thought they were being clever I think in in my mind is you know it took you long enough for for Locke and then it took you long enough for Chief. But it's delivered and very differently. It's delivered very differently. But then in between there, when Locke is deployed, um, to go get on the Guardian. She shows lots of emotion there, and then all of a sudden, she all of a sudden that emotion is taken away. Like she seems proud or happy a little bit. Like if you read her facial expressions, but the emotion when she last sent Locke off to bring her uh, Spartans home was completely void here. 
Oh, that totally makes sense though, because when you read her journal and you read the stories that are told from her perspective, she deliberately puts on a stern, motherly uh, face of like emotion, like uh, emotionless. Do you know what I mean? She has a mask that she shows for her Spartans to show them that she's strong. So uh, to me, like the fact that there is so much emotion in that one sentence is probably the um, a lot more than they're used to. It speaks. Yeah, it it speaks to like how much actually got through her mask. Let's say of like um, she's of how like strongly she feels. She's the parent that never fully approves of any achievements you have. You're like, oh my god, Halsey, I won the lottery, and she's like, cool. <laughs> yeah, but then like when you're not there, she's going around and rubbing it in other people's faces. How amazing you are! Yeah, that's what, you know it what I mean. Is, so yeah. like, she she's always been great at selling her program, her Spartan twos, and her Spartans, and what they've achieved and how they've done it. I think she and... also realizes she doesn't want to be that way to the Spartans because she doesn't want them to build a very strong maternal bond with her, because yes, that would and... that it undermines them as soldiers. Which undermines yeah. her project, with un- which undermines her. It's like one of those things. That's definitely how she was. I think she's definitely Oh, it's different now, lot. yeah. Think well, now that she's lost death- her daughter and, you know... Exactly. Like, the Spartans are her babies now. Like, there's no one else for her. Everyone else in the universe hates her. Yeah. So that's what I think is great. I think that'll change really fast to come um, mm-hmm. the next game. Oh, yeah. yeah if, if, Hal- if they even include Halsey in this next game. Oh, they have to. She's got to be huge. That makes me feel better about the line. That Okay, that makes me feel better about the line, but it doesn't make me feel any better about... We've talked about at the beginning of this, um, about the beginning of the game, how you need to have all, all of this external knowledge, all of the extended universe knowledge for this game to make good sense. Yeah. And again, we'll co- cover off on it next um, episode, but... From someone that's just playing the games that doesn't have all that knowledge, she they see the emotion and then all of a sudden she hardens up. It just doesn't doesn't line up. Yeah. Um, and and or maybe she could have had that line and then maybe they could have had something like an embrace. I, I don't know something else, but the fact that they just kind of chopped it off right there, it just it didn't feel right to end the game that way. I mean. With with the context of who Halsey is, I think it's perfect. Like me as a Same. me as a like a really in depth lore Halo fan, I'm like this is exactly what this is ex- like. It, it's emotional. It's like this is exactly how it would be. This it feels very true to all of their characters because you know Master Chief's not comfortable with his emotions. Halsey's not really comfortable with showing her emotions. Like I I liked it, but we're not normal Halo fans. <laughs> we're, yeah. we're like crazy people. True. So. Mm-hmm the best <laughs> and they're i mean you know, they leave it on a cliffhanger on purpose and all that sort of stuff i mean that's that's part of it. they're not trying to wrap the story here um any other thoughts before we talk about the legendary ending no no i think i think it's good it's a good mission i yeah it sets up the next one really well in terms of like at the end of this game i think i'm way more excited than i was when i started it yeah mm-hmm. like like the the end game hype is really really good. The rest is like, uh, meh. Like yeah. the one thing this game does really really good is puts the universe in a very interesting state mm-hmm. that you're excited to see what happens. Next. But and it's not a state that we were expecting either. Yeah. So we didn't know necessarily who the big bad was going to be, but we did not expect Cortana to be the big bad at the end of. We also didn't this expect game. this whole like AI rebellion thing. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's very dire. All in all, a good setup for the next game. Yeah. And then even a better setup when you talk about the legendary ending, right? Ooh, what's the legendary ending? Please tell me. Well, there is a Halo. <laughs> uh, there's a Halo in Halo? There's what? There's a Halo, finally, in Halo what? 5. What? <laughs> they had to sneak one in there. <laughs> exactly. Otherwise, they couldn't call it Halo. I know. Like b- they snuck it in Reach. Halo they in snuck four. it in here. Like, every Halo has to have a Halo in it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so the our Ali Ali Oxen Free tone that didn't really sound like Ali Ali Oxen Free that doesn't sound like Ali Ali Oxen Free at, at here at the end that Cortana is is humming, but she's got it. She has control of the halos now. At least like, this it's, halo. This is a real. I love this legendary ending because it's so ominous. It's mm-hmm. like oh shit, 
It also doesn't make much sense. Like, how is she going to fire off a halo and not kill people who are loyal to her? Or is she yeah. just crazy enough that she's like, I'm just going to kill everyone who gives a shit? Or is she going to modulate the halo to, in some way, target specific types? I like the Senescent say... array? I mean, if it's if it's technically yes. Installation 7 that was part of the original halo array, the Senescent array, which could do that. You could do localized think... pulses. I think that's something that they would do, especially because didn't we have that um that Halo thing with Jeff that stream that was all about that's the Halo wh- that's where we learned everything. about the Senescent Array exactly. and the Neoteric Array. Why tell us that shit? It's not gonna yeah. matter later. Yeah. So, and we all know Installation Seven's special. It's mm-hmm. a different. It's weird. It's mysterious. It's the I'm, number I'm, seven. It's number seven. Yeah. Bungie loves their sevens. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll we'll just have to see. I I could, I definitely could see it going that way where she decides to take the one halo that can do localized pulses and just bring it to Earth and do a localized pulse in the in that uh, solar system. Yeah, yeah, we're set up for lots of interesting things. So let's do some more speculation, I guess, in the next episode. Okay, let's cut it here. Any trivia? Um, there's actually a good bit. I'll chop and change with the ones that are actually kind of interesting. So, I said there was a white scar plasma caster. There's the Vorpal Talon and energy sword, Ooh. and also the twin jewels of Mithrilian binary oh, rifle. Oh my god! Oh, that's it's the also best. This oh my god! The twin jewels <laughs> of Mithrilian like just gets me going because it's not one beam; it's two binary rifle beams, and it's just fantastic. It's beautiful, beautiful. It's it's pretty crazy. Um, it is possible apparently to get your mantis or ghost with crazy maneuvering into the final area um, because Halo people are crazy and that's what we do. Um, you apparently can skip a bunch of the pulses by the Guardian if you have an energy sword. You can kind of like sprint and if you're a veil apparently you can even cheese that more. Don't know if it really achieves anything. It just gets you through the sequence faster I think. Um, it is interesting to note um just it will probably come out of our next episode but in bad blood the book it is revealed that blue team and fire team osiris are get back to saint helios because exuberant witness um gave them a pelican that was crashed and actually opened up a slip space portal for them um so that's actually how they got there and it's also interesting to note that cortana's announcement she doesn't include the yamame which are the buggers and edward book notices this and says it in bad blood uh, he says I don't blame her because of he hates those creatures essentially. So I did think that, I didn't notice yeah, that, but thought point. it was interesting. She left them out, and and there you go. That's that's they're like, the bits they're that we sentient, haven't talked about. but not like kind of sentient, right? They're a hive mind yeah. kind of thing going on. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. All right. So that's trivia. Any? Well, I guess we were doing some intel. There's ten little chunks of of trivia, right? Yep. Or yep. intel. I'll, I'll I'll try to get through them as fast as I can. Some of them are uh, interesting. Um, so this first one is Sanghili personal log uh, seven zero nine one out of two. Uh, his name was Bib Jam. <laughs> he was a mere grunt, uh, scared through spirit. Uh, past his useful years, his advice was uh, unconventional. Fight as if there was no honor in death. He guided us through victory and conflict after conflict, and while we reveled in our glory, he mourned every brother we lost along the way. So, an actual grunt doing stuff, which is interesting. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, This next one is one of the most interesting ones I've ever seen in my life. It's a forerunner record alive, two out of of five. Bastion. Alright, next one is (laughs) Sanghili Personal Log 709, two out of two. Uh, as the war went on, uh, Bib Jam became more concerned with protecting us. When we finally caught him betraying our movements to the Swords of Sang Helios, he told us capture was the only way for us to avoid death. He truly believed he found a way to save us. I could not meet his gaze once I... I could not meet his gaze when I ran him through. Poor grunt. Poor grunt. Rip. Um, this next one is Sang Heli Personal Log 881. Uh, the hand of the didact was broken. Why have none risen to take his place? The abiding truth was not per- <laughs> was not uh, persistent if none of us are alive to speak of it. Um, if I am branded a heretic for doubting the Forerunner's promise, then so be it. Which is interesting because servants of abiding truth are a big thing in the uh, Kilo 5 trilogy. Mm, yeah, that's right. 
kind of the main main saying Healy dudes. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next one is Foreigner Record Alive, three out of five. Uh, construction now, constructor now under warden control. Control can be taken back. External though, the monitor could help if only I could speak with her. So that's interesting. Uh, here he is again, uh, four out of five. Bastion, Bastion. Interesting. Good job. Uh, double Bastion. <laughs> double Bastion. <laughs> you never want a double Bastion, guys. Don't ever do it. Uh, this one is the UNSC cockpit recording. Ooh. Uh, this is pilot 28-5, uh, Lee from dropship Boza. Coming down to an unknown planet. Mayday, mayday. Sending our location now. We've been caught in a slip space bu- bubble of an unknown entity. Uh, that, this next that explains the, why that pelican was there in that last spot, right? Yeah, yeah, that's mm-hmm. the uh, pelican. Um, this next one is the final record from our f- forerunner friend, Alive, 5 out of 5. And Scylla distracted, Warden as well, domain repairing, healing, I feel clear for the first time in... There, finally, I see, after so long, Bastion, Bastion still lives! I don't know what this guy's talking mm. about, I'm so confused, but... He has this forerunners have an innate connection with the domain where it's like just the internet in their brains all the time. So mm-hmm. he's finally reconnected with the domain. He can finally see what's going on. Um, so wait, was that four to five or five out of five? That was five out of five. So, so do that's... we know is that present day stuff or is that back yes, in the day stuff? He's he's referenced Cortana the Ancilla and what's going on here. So it's it's present. This guy's just wandering around, an undesignated forerunner builder, talking about Bastion. No idea where he came from. Weird. So, I wonder if he hasn't popped up anywhere, I don't think, in the nope. extended universe. So I wonder what they do with that. I, I wonder if he's a physical being. He might not be. Or like a memory, like the librarian. Yeah. Or is he another monitor? Is he... Is he a, like? Uh, is he something Maybe digital? Maybe he's catalog. Maybe he's a catalog, is he, yeah. forerunner catalog or something. Yeah. Have we figured out what Bastion is? Nope. I'm guessing it's a place, but he says still lives, so I'm not sure if it's like a person or an AI or something like that. that it could be a place. It could be a city full of forerunners. It could be a place, I don't know. It could be a shield world that still exists with living forerunners. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, it's it. That's that's one of the biggest mysteries we have in these logs. Mm-hmm. So the next one is UNSC personal log. I've managed to get to get out of the crash site with the mantis, but I'm injured. I had to find a safe place, catching my breath. I've seen more UNSC dropships coming with those sa- slip space bubbles. No survivors found yet. I need to rest. I have no idea what's going on here. So this one is right next to the second mantis you can find in that open vehicle area. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. So that's where that story comes from. Poor guy. He's having a hell of a day. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the last one is Singhili Personal Log 977. There is no future for the Covenant. The gods have turned their backs against the human woman and offered the librarian's key, and Madama took it. That was meant to test his faith, his ability to resist temptation. He failed. We all failed. This is our punishment. This is a hearken to Halo Escalation where the Janus key was still a thing, mm-hmm. and it is not anymore. So, yep. Y- you can read Escalation and figure out what's going on, but... It, it doesn't really lead to much yeah, with the Janus we, we key, We kind of talked about that in the Spartan Ops yeah. so, series. That's it. That's the last intel that you ha- I'm forced to read out loud on the show. <laughs> Hopefully the next game actually has terminals again, which are way more fun. <laughs> Congrats, Krista. Thank nice you. work. 117. You did it. I did it. All by myself. Chivo unlocked. <laughs> Bleep bloop. <laughs> Okay, let's do community. Uh, we'll get out of here afterwards, and we're going to have some fun conversations in the next episode. Dave, what do you got? Totes. Um, Colin Perkins, the admin, December 9th at 7.21 p.m. We've lost. The created have claimed the mantle and are now in charge of keeping the peace in the Milky Way galaxy. What's your next move? Question for Mission D. We've held five guardians of mission. Look at Colin getting deep. <laughs> what are we going to get? So James Skelton says, uh, posted a nice little picture, which is go to the Winchester, have a point, and wait for this whole thing to blow over, <laughs> which is a line slash meme picture from uh, Shaun of the Dead. It's pretty good. Uh, Manny says, my nobility will not blind me. I will bow down to our goddess Queen Cortana. Time will once again be our ally. We must perch, we must perch our thoughts on the future. 
of humanity as well as the Chief's next anticipate Chief's next move. Cortana cannot resist the membrum for rally. <laughs> all right, Manny. All right, okay. Uh, Matthew says gather all of Oni's top scientists, foreign experts, you know, archaeologists, including Catherine Halsey, and find a way to tune Halo's pulse into the one that corrupts AIs and impacts Oni artificial intelligence. Wipe the galaxy clean of AI. There you go. Mm. There's a story That's an for actual, you guys. like, good, good response. Right. <laughs> Fuck's sake, Matt. Nice one there. Yeah, he's getting a love heart right there. There you go, Matthew. That's for you, buddy. <laughs> And Timothy says, I welcome our new robot overlords. Lucas, I, I'm going to get myself a T-101 Terminator, go back in time and stop this from happening while John, the savior of human race, battles evil machines and destroys Sky. Oh, I mean Cortana. <laughs> mm, yep. Mm-hmm. He's getting pretty close. <laughs> Dylan says, can't be any worse than eaten by flood. At least the bright side, my internet should be awesome. <laughs> it's true. I mean, like video games are going to be crazy with these AIs. <laughs> no lag. <laughs> Uh, Lance is saying hide in the cave with George and Noble Six. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. George just dead. says the answer is obvious in it and he had to give a crazy picture. I'm not watching that video. Sorry, but I gotta keep going. Patrick says a Spartan. As a Spartan, I would fight until the end. As a civilian, I would make a new religion following our new AI masters. And as a Marine, I would beg to become a Spartan. Okay. Three different uh, professions. I like that. Yeah. Uh, Brad says, find some way to the Ark and recruit the one and only power to stop her. Yap, yap, the destroyer. Oh, man. <laughs> yes. Uh, this is that you have <laughs> to Our yell Lord at her. Uh, all I would have to do is convince him that the shiny blue lady wants to take away all the, all the food nipples. <laughs> Randy says, I probably just use that as an excuse to call off work. <laughs> um, Chad says, the only way to beat a forerunner construct is with a forerunner or forerunner ship. Time to find another shield world with dragoons. Ooh, That'd be cool. Yeah. And then Eric finally says in the latest Halo book, it's not a four one or real but I'm gonna kinda of pre read this and make sure I'm not spoiling stuff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you. There might be spoilers. Uh, that's okay. in there. Yeah. There is a little bit. It's it's a it's a it's not a bad answer, but just people should go read Halo Renegades because it's awesome. And I alluded to some of the stuff earlier on today as well. So there you cool. go, guys. Thank you. Thank you all. Discord, what you got? All right, same question. Uh, Reindeer Girl says it's time to fuck some robots. So, <laughs> Blue uh, Calyx says uh, build a really, really big magnet and make them all go fuzzy and die. Great. That's get get a cup of water. Yeah, yeah you know? exactly. <laughs> Unplug that. Uh, that's called Halo Ring. It's, it's... Uh, third says, uh, well, I'd look into intergalactic travel options. <laughs> Um, uh, Dizudo. That's the equivalent of going to Canada, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Moving to Canada. Pretty much. Going to the next galaxy. Uh, Dizudo says, uh, Cartman summed it up perfectly, and it's a gif of him saying, Screw you guys, I'm going home. So, <laughs> that's pretty good. Nice. Uh, Darth Destroyer says, I have a three step flawless plan. One, build a time machi- machine. Uh, set three. Uh, one, build a time machine. To send a carefully selected soldier back in time to click clack Cortana before Cortana was even created. That means you're going to kill Halsey, basically. Uh, Three, the soldier sent back is named Keys. Wait, the first guy we sent back is named Keys? As in Jacob Keys? Oh, shit. (laughs) I like that. (laughs) Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. Dizzy Bumper says, worship Cortana fleet? So just uh, just submit. Um, so, yep. Matt says, uh, create an army of super soldiers equipped with amazing armor and weapons. Train them as young children to ensure, ensure lo- loyalty to the cause and call them all by one letter, three numbers, in a three-number naming system like S117. <laughs> Viva la revolution! So, just, just Spartans. Hmm. Good idea. Uh, Christ Mim says, uh, step one, cry, step two, hide, step three, start again. So, so basically step three, see step one. So, uh, crying and hiding. Uh, that's pretty much it. Stuff got a little weird. I'm not going to go through that. So, um, yeah, we're done. Very nice. Thank you, Discord. All right. That will do it for our debriefing of the Guardian's mission from Halo 5 Guardians. It's a weird thing to Google, by the way. Halo 5 Guardians Guardians. 
On the next episode, we will be re- recapping Halo 5. Send us your thoughts at podcastevolved at gmail.com or drop us a tweet at Podcast Evolved on Twitter. You can also support the show by visiting Podcast Evolved on Patreon. Until next time, Evolved. 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 <laughs>